What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Teddy, and we back with another video. And um, we're gonna do a 2023-2024 Celtics regular season review. Now we've been doing these videos sparingly throughout the season. Um, before the season, I want to say around All Star break. Uh, we did one not too long ago, maybe a month or so ago, but that also could have been All Star break. And then we're doing the end of the season, and then we'll do one um, round after round, assuming the Celtics stay in the playoffs for more than one round. I'm not like the other Celtics fans. I'm not like just automatically punching out, taking to the finals, Eastern Conference finals, all that stuff. Take these games one game at a time. Hope the Celtics do too. Um, obviously, they wrapped up the season yesterday against the Wizards with a win. The big six didn't play, starting five plus Al Horford. But the state ready Celtics came through, provide that W, um, which boosted the Celtics' home record to 37 and 4, which is ridiculously good. And um, however long the Celtics decide to stay in the playoffs, they'll have home court advantage. So let's get into like what we saw this season. What was some good? What was some bad? I don't normally I do good, bad, and ugly, but I don't think the Celtics had any ugly this season. So, I think we're good on that front. There was some bad. There was a lot of good, obviously. Good, 64 wins. That was two wins away from the 66 wins that the 2008 championship team got. Not going to be drawing comparisons. Like, is this a different age in basketball? That was 16 years ago. Basketball, NBA is so different right now, so you can't really compare the two. But it is pretty cool knowing that these this talented team, uh, production-wise in the regular season, pretty much mirrors – that championship team and even this team has some uh statistical st statistics basically that are better than the championship team obviously three point three pointers are a thing now more than they were back then um the rebounding is i think the Celtics are second in overall in the nba and rebounding i think they're first in like defensive rebound or offensive rebound king man uh the first and two shooting percentage the uh first in net rating their first in offensive rating. Basically, most of the offensive stats belong to the Celtics. It's a prolific offense where they do shoot a ton of threes, but they do make them at a high clip. Hopefully, it keeps up, and they could do that all the way to a championship. Um, which brings me to a little bit of the bad. When the Celtics are not making threes, they have a hard time adjusting that they need to go get a bucket, like in the paint. And... That was one of the reasons why they brought in Kristaps Porzingis because he's a post player that can do things in the post that we haven't had since maybe Kevin Garnett. You know what I'm saying? Um, obviously, Al Horford is a great, phenomenal post player, but he's a little short in stature, so he can't just – he can high IQ you to a basket, but he can't just catch the ball, turn around, and shoot over top of you type of player that Kristaps is. You know what I'm saying? So I think we, I hopefully uh, in the playoffs we utilize that way more than what we've been doing, especially when the threes aren't falling. Now the threes are falling, all bets are off. Um, most of the games this year were blowouts. Celtics went in by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. When the threes are falling, good luck because it is just I can see, and I'm a Celtics fan, so I be rooting for it. But you can see the other team basically like you know, stressing from the, the avalanche and the snowball effect of one person makes a three, then somebody else makes a three, then the other person comes back and makes another three, then the third person makes a three, and now you know you have a starting five where everybody's made three or four or five threes apiece, you know what I'm saying? And then you got the guys coming off the bench. You got your Sam Houses, you got your Peyton Pritchards, you know, um, Xavier Tillman who came over in the trade, uh, Jaden Springer who's been showing flashes as of late, so – it it could be demoralizing for a team. But hopefully if the shots aren't falling, they, they utilize Chris Stapps in the post, Horford Moore in the post, uh, Xavier Tillman if he's going to play uh, any significant time. Um, obviously, my bad. I can't forget Luke Cornette. Um Now, last season, I'll be the first to admit I was one of the Luke Cornette haters. I did not think Luke Cornette belonged in the NBA. I did not think he belonged in on the Boston Celtics roster. This year has been – a great improvement for Luke Cornette. He's been, dare I say it, reliable. Um, this is a walking double double. He finishes at the rim. He's dunking more. He finishes the layups. He's a good free throw shooter. He rebounds in these spotty situations where we need rebounding. 
Um, last year he was missing so many layups. He was missing dunks. He couldn't catch. Um, really, really seems like he polished his game. Really worked on his game a lot, and it's it's affecting. I mean, you've seen the effectiveness of it. You know what I mean? So, shout out to Luke Cornette. Uh, obviously, Drew Holiday coming over from what was that Portland, but technically the Bucks, and he's been dial down not asking him to do as much as he's done with milwaukee you know what i'm saying he was part of the big three in milwaukee so he has to do one third of a big three's responsibility versus here he's kind of like fourth fifth option so if you could just play some timely defense which he does um hit them open threes which he does you know make them layups when you get them and stuff like that he's another ball handler that can distribute the point guard and shout out to drew because he just signed a massive extension for a year 135 million but i think once you take out the guarantees you know the signing bonus i think it's a i think it's a very small contract i think that's a, uh that's how a lot of gms get past that whole salary cap thing is they sign these guys to these very small contracts but they they front load it with us with a hefty signing bonus that doesn't count towards the cap. You know what I'm saying? At least I don't think it counts towards the cap because there's no way we should be able to sign all these players back without being super over the luxury tax. But somehow, some way we're doing it. Um, we have to sign Tatum this summer, I think, and Derek White. And hopefully the Celtics win the championship and makes all these signings and money worth it. If not, I don't know. We're stuck, basically. But anyways, back to the good. The Celtics definitely have a complete team. On great nights, they're unstoppable. On good nights, they still win because they pretty much out talented people. And on bad nights, which comes when um, not really when the shots aren't falling because they're still capable to like beat teams and stuff like that, but more so effort wise. And I think that's going to be the biggest Achilles heel for the Celtics going in the playoffs when everything slows down. Everybody's effort level is going to be up. And I think the Celtics really struggle with teams who have high effort, which is why we often lose to, like, the Heat. You know what I'm saying? We have trouble with the Knicks. And we have trouble with teams like the Magic and stuff like that. They're not as good as the Celtics talent-wise, but they try hard. You know what I'm saying? And I think it was, Ke was Kevin Durant said that where – Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. You know what I'm saying? And so that kind of rings true in these situations. But I'm expecting this this go around. The Celtics have been basically dominating throughout the whole season because they're not going to get judged in the regular season. Anybody that's a Celtics fan or a Celtics media person or if you critique the Celtics or whatever, you, however your stance is on the Celtics, we all understand that the goal for the Celtics is to win the championship. Not to make the playoffs, not to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. We've been there five times in seven years. It, it sounds cute. It's cool to watch on ESPN. But when you keep flaming out every year, and no matter what the reason is, because, you know, Celtics fans got a million reasons why we always lose, other than, no, we just got to play better and be better than another team. But anyway, it's not this kind of video. Um, we have to get it done. We did break through one year and went to the finals, and we got totally outclassed or out IQ by Golden State. Um, really handed them the championship. People were so high on Ime Udoka, but for the life of me, I couldn't understand why we were playing drop coverage on, like, the best shooter of all time and the second best shooter of all time, and didn't really make no sense to me. But hopefully this time around with Joe Mazzula, who I'm going to uh, – Use as a segue to get into uh, his performance this season. A lot of people give Joe Mazzula a real hard time with the whole not calling timeouts thing, um, not drawing up good plays and stuff like that. Joe Mazzula's been an excellent coach, man. Um, he has these guys buying in for the most part. He has these guys giving more effort on defense. Uh, the assignments that he assigns are pretty good. He has Jalen Brown guarding like the star player. Tatum gets some time guarding the star player. They don't just, like, you know, hide on defense so they can just focus on offense. Have these guys back playing, like, consistently as two-way players. Um, Derek White and Drew Holiday, as you can see in the picture here, the stock exchange, I think that's what they call them, 
they've been they've been a tenacious backcourt. Um, it's going to be difficult for guards to score because in the playoffs you're probably going to see more Drew Holiday and Derek White versus like us always switching, us always doing these little you know zones and stuff like that. Unless the team just can't shoot threes, I mean you know it's a way to preserve energy during the zone. But other than that, I'm expecting Derek White and Drew Holiday to pick up the uh, assignments more consistently in case you run into a Knicks team. They'll be on Jalen Brunson. Or you could throw a Jalen Brown on Jalen Brunson. He's bigger, you know, wingspan. Um, just got to be careful with the fouls. Obviously, I'm going to get into that in a few seconds. Not that Jalen Brown is like a super, you know, fouler or anything, but the way that the referees kind of dictate the game, you kind of got to adjust, but we'll get into that. But, yeah, I'm expecting them to pick up the – uh the weight tremendously in the playoffs. Not sure who the Celtics will play round one. You still got to get through the play-in tournament and all that type of stuff. I think it's the Heat, 76ers, uh, the Hawks and the Bulls. So they'll, while they sort that out, the Knicks and the Celtics are waiting. All the other matchups are set. We have the Bucks and the Pacers and the Cavaliers and the Magic as the other two first-round matchups um, in the Eastern Conference. So... I say that to say, like, when the playoffs start, everybody knows the referees call less fouls. It's a more physical game. The Celtics already don't get foul calls as it is, so they shouldn't be expecting anything. So when Jalen Brown is checking uh, Jalen Brunson or something like that, he has to be mindful that they'll let him get away with stuff, but they also won't because for some reason the Celtics can't get foul calls unless they play playing defense, and then they get fouls called on them all the time. So just be mindful of that. Tatum, all that complaining into the ref thing. You got to stop that stuff, man. Uh, I really feel like when people don't take you serious for, like, the MVP, when people don't, like, mention you up there with uh, the people you think they should mention you because you came out and said it yourself in these interviews why you don't get, like, the respect or anything like that, a lot of that has to do with that, man. Uh, you crying after every single play, um, not getting back on defense, the instantly starting the break for the other team. Um, you can play, and then you'll go for like a steal, which you have no chance of getting, which creates another fast break scenario for them. It's just a lot of little things that you could do to like be better. Obviously, if if you're crying every single play and they're not giving you the foul, just stop crying, bro. You'll get it when they give it to you. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't get it, then just get a bucket, bro. You're, 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 I done seen, bro, drive and dunk on Braun. I know that was six, seven years ago, but even this year, you've seen him drive and dunk on like centers. Like he's finished over Wimbenyama and all that type of stuff. Bro, you don't need a foul call. Go finish. The foul's going to come if they deem it worthy enough to stock. Like, I guarantee you, if you complain less, They'll look out for you. That's the only problem I have with Tatum is the the constant crying. And I hate to say it's a light skin person thing, man, but all I'm saying is we don't see Jalen Brown crying like that. All right, you know, I had to get my jokes off. My bad, my bad, my bad. But anyways, yeah, um, this championship run is all going to come down to Jalen Brown and Tatum as I'm getting ready to wrap this video up. I know it's, um, we almost at the 15 minute mark. They have to be consistent. They haven't been consistent in the playoffs. Um, normally, somebody is off, which the last couple of years has been Tatum in the playoffs. He plays a lot of minutes during the regular season. I'm not a big fan of it. He doesn't take a lot of games off. I'm not a big fan of it. And I think he flames out. And uh, hopefully, with all this talent, he can preserve himself. But he has to give up the mantle when it's needed. He has to understand that we can't afford the 3 for 15s the five for 17s, if you see that you're off, defer to Jalen Brown because Jalen Brown's been on fire since the All-Star break, and he normally sets the tone for the game. But if you have to – if he if he has to go out and get 50 a game, let him do it. You know what I'm saying? And you just try to come back next game. Get this championship, bro. Like, all the ego pride to the side, get this championship, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like – KP, if you off, defer to the other two. If Derek White is on fire, ride the hot hand. Don't make this any more complicated than it has to be. It's already going to be difficult because these are some great teams in the East. The Knicks, who would have ever thought the Knicks was a two seed? The Bucks, third seed, even though Giannis is hurt. I'm not sure about the status on Giannis. And then if you make the finals, the juggernauts out west is ridiculous. But anyways, 
that's my Celtics review. Let me know if I missed anything. Let me know what you think about the Celtics team. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And um, I'm Teddy. I'm out.